فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير الله سيس When is it that the believers, has the time not come for your hearts to soften? Come on, you got to say, yes, Ya Allah, my heart, the time has come, my hearts are softened, and Alhamdulillah, I turn to you, Ya Allah. Allah says, وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِن قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ let them not be similar to those who have been given the book before them, who prolonged in their bad ways so much that their hearts were hardened. You know, if you prolong in your bad ways for a long, long time, your heart becomes so hard that for you, the sin is nothing. I give you an example. A man who commits adultery or a woman who commits adultery or fornication for the first time would regret it because of their Iman. And then sometimes they commit it again. The regret is there perhaps and a third time the regret begins to dwindle slightly and a fourth time until it becomes 20, 30 times and then it's just a game. It's no longer a regret and Allah is totally out of the picture. Why? Because I'm used to it. My heart is hardened. This is called a hardened heart. You're so used to committing sin that for you to, to, to commit the sin is nothing. When you have been reading your five salah a day to miss one salah, Yes, your heart will be sore and you will read your qada. Then suddenly you miss another one and then you miss a third one and then you miss all your fajr every day. So you say, I'm a very good Muslim. I read salah four times a day. Hey, is this a new sect or something? You need to make an effort to get up. Wallahi, forsake your bed for the sake of Allah. I promise you on the day of, on the day you die, your salah will come in the form of a man carrying you and helping you into your grave and go with you in your grave. And that salah will protect you from the punishment of the grave and the scorpions and the snakes that might attack on that day when you're all alone and your family's left you in the darkness. And they've gone back and they've forgotten about you. And a few generations down, they won't even know your name. But who's with you? My Salah. I used to get up for Salatul Fajr every single day. May Allah strengthen up for Salatul Fajr. How many of us are resolute that from this morning, we will be making Salatul Fajr? Put up your hand. Subhanallah, we see the hands by the will of Allah. The reason I'm telling you to put up your hand, it's not just because I want to see it. It's because you must feel you've made a commitment. That's all. I don't even know the people around me. I can't even see the hands. Oh, brother, by the way, I know you, yeah. <laughs> MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. It's a commitment. You've just made a commitment. You've said, Oh Allah, I will not miss. Oh Allah, I will dress appropriately. I will watch my tongue, brothers and sisters. Because today the media is such. Every small thing is a big swear word. Do you know that? They start swearing and it's on Twitter and Facebook and everywhere else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Don't let your heart become hard. Go and read verse number 16 of Surah Al Hadid, and you will find it quite clearly telling you don't let the period prolong, lest your heart becomes hard like those before you. Don't let it become hard. You've done something wrong, turn to Allah immediately. Promise Allah never again. I won't do this again. Never. It's not worth it. Wallahi, we are insan. We are human. We do falter. We do fall. But at the same time, turn back to Allah. He is merciful. He will forgive you. But don't plan to commit a sin again. It's like always we say, the four conditions of asking Allah's forgiveness, to admit your sin, to regret it, to promise, Allah, to promise you're not going to do it again. In fact, to admit, to regret, to ask for forgiveness, and to promise never to do it again. Four things. Did you hear those four? Can I say them again? Admit your sin. Regret it. Ask Allah to forgive you for the sin and at the same time promise not to do it again. If those conditions are met, any sin between you and Allah is wiped out. Wiped out without ever being mentioned again. When you repent again from the same sin, that second repentance is now repenting for a sin that's no longer existing. So what it does is it elevates your status in the eyes of Allah. To say this person is still concerned about something I've already forgiven them a long time ago that shows that they love me. It shows that they worship me and me alone. So that is an elevation of your status, subhanallah. But if a person commits the same sin again and again, like I've always said, you need to ask Allah's forgiveness again and again. And on condition that when you are asking Allah's forgiveness, you haven't planned to sin, to repeat the sin. When I'm asking Allah's forgiveness, I must say never again. I can't say, Oh Allah, I committed this sin. I admit it. Ya Allah, I regret it. I ask you to forgive me. I won't commit it. I won't ever do it again. And then you stop for a moment and say, 
I might just do it again. Astaghfirullah. That's not what we want. You will not do it again. Then sometime later, if shaitan gets hold of you and the same sin is repeated, go back and repeat the same four stages. Go back. You never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. And this is why we say when you're in good company, when you have, when you have some positive speech coming in your direction, which motivates you and reminds you by the will of Allah, you will be able to become a much better person.